Thanks, Chris. Luigi Games. Let's do this. I told you there's a lot of stuff launching, so... <laughs> Let's go over all of it this week. Uh, a bunch of stuff just ended, and uh, depending on where you spent your money or how you spent your money, uh, you may or may not have a whole bunch of money left this month, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, as always, if you like this, weekly uh, updates on the Patreon, a little behind-the-scenes info, as well as a little bit of preview of stuff that's uh, upcoming as well. So if you like that, down below. Otherwise, let's just get right into it. There's a lot of stuff to talk about this week, and you know me, and I like to ramble anyway, so let's just do this. <laughs> if you had told me uh, last week, at the beginning of this video, I would be talking about these two games as, you know, two of the most popular ones that launched this week, I would have, you know, looked at you a little sideways, but completely feasible too, because the commonality between these first two games is really that you're seeing more of a broad base master market appeal. And I think that's great because it's elevating a little bit of the ingenuity and it's elevating a little bit of the complexity at the mass market, which is why I love seeing things at Target. First up is Hand to Hand Wombat. Um, it is what it is. It's not really sort of any Wombat hand to hand fighting game, but it's by the people from Exploding Kittens and Throw Throw Burrito. Basically, it's a heads down seven up version of building a tower with your eyes closed. And one person, or maybe more, is the wombat where you're taking pieces off of the tower and everyone else is trying to build the tower. This is one of those where they offer these a little bit of a deluxifications. And when I looked at this earlier today, they did not vote out the bad wombats. Okay, there you go. You're voting as well. They did not actually have stretch goals up, even though clearly they're way above their funding goal here um, of $10,000 at 266. Let's see. Again, I like this, actually. This, when I was reading it, didn't make a whole lot of sense. But having a graphic like this actually really works. And essentially, you're just getting little deluxifications down here. You're getting a keychain and an adventure book. And if you want to pay $100 for a $22 game, you can get a prototype. <laughs> so, anyway. And again, graphic makes sense here. You're getting a little uh, fanny pack. It's not a pouch. It's a fanny pack. I wish they had just gone full bore... Uh, dove right into it and gone fanny pack. Now, they got all stretch goals here. Are these just mystery? Or I'm assuming they're going to be like unlocking them at some point slowly throughout the campaign to entice people because there were not anything down here and there still is not anything down here. So that's what I would assume. So if you want to know what those are and if you want something lighter like uh, Exploding Kittens or th Throw Throw Burrito for as much as people sometimes look at those and you know kind of go meh, I know a lot of people they're a hit with. So at the same time, I give them kudos. They're putting stuff out that people want to buy and play. So there you go. Hand-to-hand -hand Wombat. Next up, Trekking Through History. Uh, the other Trekking Dog games from Underdog it has really been just sort of this solid, under-the-radar sort of uh, series. And it is just going to be something else along these lines of the similar versions. Only this time you're going through history. You have the ability to manipulate the time-space continuum to uh, venture through, I think it's what, it three days or three rounds, essentially, to visit these various places and match up and set collect and that sort of thing. The biggest question, and I think this was with it with trekking around the world or trekking through the world, was why get it now on Kickstarter, right? And I believe actually the price was relatively good because you're getting some of the expansion and the module. Now, I'm not sure as the reason you were getting it previously on Kickstarter was because necessarily they were exclusives, but I think it was more they offered just a better price. And it looks like here, interesting, uh, they have gone with just one pledge level. I'm not sure what was going on here. Did they offer an early bird? Oh, free shipping. Oh, no, nope, free shipping there too. Yeah, so you're getting a real, you're getting a better price here. And you're getting a little bit of an exclusive uh, expansion pack and the solo mode. Which, on a game like this, it probably works pretty well as a solo mode. This is one of those I could see going either way. They took backer suggestions off of the last campaign for this game as well too. For real events, real places, real times in history. And this is, again, one of those games, sort of reminds me a little bit, this series of like Cascadia where you can play it at both the adult and the family level, depending on where you are or what your group is like. 108 different historical events, which is pretty unique. Having 108 different cards, that's that's good. I like that. Let's see. What are you getting? Oh, Neoprene Mat. That's something new and impressive. I like seeing that. So especially for a $50 price, a Neoprene Mat, cat alert, uh, <laughs> is, is good. 
And so, again, I think you're getting a good value from, you know, if that, if that's really what you're concerned about. But, you know, ultimately, what do you want to do with this game? And does the mechanic actually line up for you? Because that's, regardless of whether you're going to be able to resell it for more money or not, um, that's what matters. Collecting tokens, visiting events, but you should do them in chronological order. And it's just beautiful to look at on this neoprene mat as well. And if you're a history buff, they say, there's going to actually be a little bit of uh, fluff text for you as well, so you can learn a little bit more. So, uh, 12 hours each day to explore, three days total. There you go, like I said. 24 unique itineraries to choose from, and you're going to have challenges to pursue, it says. So, this is interesting. I like this. Kickstarter exclusive time warp expansion and solo mode, like I mentioned. Tactic strategies, special powers per round, solo mode. Again, solo modes are going to do things a little bit automated and rule books out there as well. So I can see why this is doing well. Again, trekking the national parks and trekking the world were just solid underrated games. So yeah. And if you want a little art too, check it out. So that is trekking through history from underdog. There you go. Next up is rogue angels. Again, this one, I heard a lot of positive comments about it. The biggest thing that obviously struck me is that again, although it's raised almost $20,000 in less than 24 hours, and having a funding goal of nearly 400,000 US dollars for a campaign that has two previously funded campaigns of not more than about 89,000 euros, that's a big jump. And I'm guessing maybe part of that funding and part of that extra expense is the fact that it is made in Europe, they're saying. But ultimately, I'd like to see, okay, well, where is that price breakdown? Why do you actually need $400,000? I know other campaigns are doing it as a funding goal for a lot less, but I'd love to see the breakdown. So maybe they have it. Now, again, as I described this last week, a very tactical standee shooter, uh, dungeon crawl esque game. And, you know, they even used exactly what I said. Uh, you must have had similar thoughts from similar people. Uh, Mass Effect board game. If ISS Vanguard was more of the tactical top down approach, this one is more of the boots on the ground. Again, it runs through with a couple examples of how you're doing it, engaging, going back and forth, playing in a cooperative manner. And I don't know what is going on with the drawing in here on the chips, but I kind of like it. Evolving personalities, style, plays have consequences. Damage system integrated to the cards, so cards take damage. It's integrating how you're going to be able to use them. And narrative adventure with an AI. And, okay, token drawing mechanic. Again, like, I like what I'm seeing. It's just, where is that price point breakdown, especially if it's a standee version? I'm checking here. $100. Okay, again, $100, not the worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, books, I don't need books, but that's still only $24 more. So, all of the usual stuff that I would expect. A bunch of quotes, a bunch of reviews, a bunch of videos. So, I, I mean, I can't comment on this. This uh, breakdown of the project funds, I have no idea if you could just do like scale wise less, but I know with a lot of production, when you're mass producing, obviously more copies, it's slightly cheaper per copy then. So I have no idea. This is one of those where if it had half or a third of its funding goal, or if this was a funding goal of 50,000, I think you'd not really necessarily have a problem. I just don't know. I, I just don't know. And this is one of those where I'm going to sort of probably keep an eye on it as it goes through the campaign because, I mean, it's got 32 days. But as I've said with several other projects that look solid, that look like they're fine games, why is this one not funding and why are other ones funding and vice versa? And some of those, if there's clear, obvious, oh, this is a flag, oh, this is a flag. And there's other ones that I just go, you know, Collab, Collab, which is killing it right now and it's relaunch. Why didn't it fund the first time? You know, slight tweaks, it's not that different the second time around. Jing Yan, not that different, although they did a lot of work, probably even more so than Colab. Again, did the core product change? Not really. So why one and not the other? Again, this is one of those that I'm just going to shake my head at and go, crowdfunding, meh, I don't know. But Rogue Angels, check it out. Next up, Captain's Log. Again, uh, out of nowhere. So this one I talked about last week as well. Up to 25,000 already raised, uh, 300 people, 27 days to go. Uh, it's looking good. It says, like I talked about last week, Zaya Influence, sandbox board game, one to four players. So the question just is, you know, again, how adaptable is this game? And they say that there's going to be a victory point variability. So if you want a longer game or a shorter game, you can do it either way. 
So that's nice, because I always worry about these games, and they're going to be epic, and they're going to be sprawling, and you have to have certain victory points. But uh, as my one critique with Uprising Curse of the Last Emperor it was that really to get the full game experience, really to get your engines built, to get the full splay and lay of the land, you really had to do the full game. You really had to do the full four rounds. And so that'd be my only concern when I look at this saying, well, you can kind of skim and skirt it. Could you imagine, like, Scythe, where they were like, you know what? If you only want to get half of the required victory points to make the game shorter, uh, you can do that. Could you could you imagine that? I mean, that wouldn't make that a fun game. Terraforming Mars, whatever, it, you know, have it and see how much you like it. So that'd be my only concern uh, to see how adaptable it is because it's nice in theory, but does it work in practicality? Uh, looks like we got a few miniatures here. A uh, little bit of the usual reputation, tokens, blah, 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 blah. A little bit of everything. So why, why, why? Standard mode navigate avoid avoid sandbanks i do not want to run into sandbanks i'm very averse to sandbanks i don't know why i'm focusing on the sandbanks uh explore interact and fight then you're upgrading your crew as well as your ship itself treasure alliances trade again like very zaya-esque and so then you can oh, i think we missed an l there on the expert mode uh, attack opponents differently, custom map, build your own map, essentially, and more board options. So again, I guess, what, again, what would be the difference in time length? What are the nuances of that? I'm assuming there is a rule book on here somewhere as well. So, yep, there we go. Rules link. Enough videos, again, where you can kind of get a good sense of what it's actually going to be like. What is the price point, though? I'm a little bit interested. I'm a little bit intrigued because we didn't get a price point yet. $85. Okay. And there, this is an early bird. So is this early bird price? Yeah. So it's a $5 early bird. So if you are watching this at this point, uh, you're probably going to be SOL. Because at the time of me filming this, uh, this is not going to be airing in the 41 hours that's left. So uh, if you miss that, it's going to cost you 5 bucks. Couple, couple. Ooh, look at me. Okay. Anyway, sorry. You can check it out on Tabletop Simulator. Again, uh, social, social, social. Shipping, shipping, shipping prototype images again there you go it's an interesting concept and pirates pirates this week i guess is what we're going with so if we're going to talk about one pirate game we might as well go right to the other pirate game next so next up we have seas of havoc seventy-two thousand. again this is one of those where i again i have no idea what funds and why sometimes in these situations but this is as my video talked about earlier in the week deck building worker placement action programming. So if those keywords sound good to you already, you should be giving this one a check out because you're taking your little ship, using your little skiffs to gather resources in phase one, then on phase two, using your action programming cards to lay them out one at a time, going around Robin, trying to navigate your little ship around the grid-based sea, run into other people, shoot cannons at other people, outmaneuver other people, and win. When you do damage, you add a damage card to their deck. There you go. Now, why are you getting it on Kickstarter? Free Sea Monster expansion, which I knew nothing about. So that's kind of cool. Again, it's a very interesting premise. I am personally not very good at action programming. Just not. Good at tactical nature, but action programming is a little different. Although this one, because you're not programming more than one turn in a row, it works a little bit easier for me. And so you have enough asymmetry between the ships themselves and the captains themselves, and the abilities that the captains have, that it works well. And then you have the little icons at the bottom of a lot of these cards in this market, for example, that line up to the worker placements that you're going to be doing on the board itself up top here, where you can see some of these from very afar, where they can be placed. And then the various islands, archipelago, whatever it is around the outside of the board are where your other workers or skiffs get placed during your turn. $89 is going to get you a deluxe version. And I mean, the, again, the big difference is deluxification is going to cost you about $25 with metal coins and wooden treasure chests, buildable wooden treasure chests. Okay. Uh, which either way, uh, you're getting the sea monster expansion for free. So it's probably a slightly better deal on this. And doesn't say exclusive, but so let's see what else we got going here. Gameplay videos, a little bit of everything. Shipping. Maybe they'll throw my video on the front page. Maybe not. Either way, not a big deal. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a nice game. It was a very nice, solid game. I don't think 
you will be disappointed. This is by far and away not a bad game. Whether or not it's for you because it's using the worker placement. Although, again, as I said in my video, it's not a super heavy worker placement. I mean, part of the problem of the worker placement is there's only so many limited spots. So you really do have to pick and choose. It's tight in that sense. That it's not just freedom to get whatever you want. But the mechanics work. It's very solid in terms of the gameplay. It's just whether or not it's right for you. And if you're looking for something piratey that's not like anything else out there, both of these offer variations that we have not seen yet in this genre or theme. There you go. Next up, Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them. Uh, bluffing games. And it's already almost 200% funded. So again, $5,600 in less than 24 hours. Two to four player bluffing, double bluffing. And it's sort of a meta within a meta. And they compare it to Love Letter and Coup right from the get-go. Best with two or three, but plays up to four. That's interesting. You usually see it the other way. So what are you doing on your turns? One to 12 points, but tactical cards can cancel points on monsters. And you take from one of the four. If it's a monster, it wakes up. You trigger your ability. And uh, discard back down to two cards. When deck is done, everyone gets two cards, compares the score, and you win. Again, this is one of those simple ones that would probably be just a nice fit in my collection. How much I'd play it would be more of the issue. So, again, they show you some of the monsters here. They show you a little bit of what their powers might be. What's the price point? $15 and free shipping to the U.S. I mean, you're not going to beat that. It's a good deal. It's a good price. Modify, destroy. Let's take that, though. There's some definitely take that. There's bluffing. And there's just uh, deduction. And random deduction, if you will. Not, like, knowledge base. What are these incidents? Are these, like, expansions? Incident 1, the dark. Incident 2, the deep. So you're just getting a little bit more of everything. The dead. That looks like that's about it. Again, enough video out there that, I mean, it's relatively uh, straightforward enough that you probably don't need uh, too much. And I wouldn't mind seeing a rule book if it's out here somewhere. Just because, again, like little nuances are sometimes lost on the bigger scheme or the bigger stage of this page. And that's about it. So, again, this just looks solid. Uh, I'll probably hit remind me on this and see where it's at at the end. Because uh, I'd be tempted. So there you go. Next up, Chang Yan. Uh, engine building resource management game, uh, sort of one of the sleeper pick for me for the week, uh, just cause it looks like a beautiful engine building game. And I like being able to get engine building games played, even though my engines often stink in the first place. So they give a nice breakdown, I believe here, Kickstarter edition of what you're going to be getting and why you're going to be getting it. 30 euros, again, cardboard, cardboard, cardboard. And then an expansion that is Kickstarter exclusive. So that's, again, the reason. It seems to be Kickstarter exclusive expansions, uh, the weekly trend, I guess. What is it? It comes in waves, comes in threes, that sort of thing. All in. So for 18 more euros, uh, metal coins, metal coins, <laughs> and a religion expansion. Now, this is interesting, too, because they've got uh, a little bit of both here. Both exclusive or both stretch goals, I mean. So all unlocked base game stretch goals, all unlocked Kickstarter. So okay, again, I guess that's the same thing. They actually say both. So not that big a deal. What are you doing, though? Take a card. Each wheat token you have gets you an extra card. Play your card to one of your gates. Then you can rearrange them if you need to. Take your resources and then build on top of a gate. Rinse and repeat. Again, rule book there. I'm probably going to be looking at that rulebook really heavily. Again, there's not a whole lot of incentive for me to early back, but I'm probably going to take a look at this in the next 24 hours after I film this to know how strongly I feel about this, because this is one that I saw could go either way. Does it have the depth that I'm looking for, but not the too much overhead or not? Again, as a small publisher, it's probably one that I'm going to support. Interesting. Uh, City Coin module is actually a part of a module for the game and the religion expansion. So, yeah, stretch goals once it's funded, shipping is whatever, it is what it is for these things, and there you go. So I have my eye on it, uh, maybe you should too, because it's going to fund very shortly after me filming this, so there you go, Chang on. Next up, Dynamine, again, only 10% funded. This was one where I saw probably the most ads for this one out of any other, and you're just basically digging a tunnel trying to get these gems, but only able to get so many gems per turn. So what you're doing is you're getting the number of building points that you have, using those to acquire tiles for your mine, and then going and delving into these underground tunnels uh, so that you can get combos and gems and points. Ten rounds and the game is over. Tile-based strategy game. 
And I like tiles. I really love mapping out things. Isle of Sky is probably one of my favorite games in my collection, especially one that does that. Pledge levels. Here we go. Again, why why isn't this funding? Why is it funding? Now, does it actually have a price point there? Gem collector. No, no price point, but what you're getting. Base game with black powder stretch goals. Gemstone stretch goals. Okay. Exclusive game, base component, stretch goals. Dwarves clan. Okay, so that's real tier. So where are we actually looking price point wise? $38 gem collector. And then $52 for the dragon skull pledge, which gets you some extra tiles and some extra dice, it looks like. And additional round tokens. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, the aesthetic isn't appealing to me as much. I, I'm not a huge fan of the dwarven miner sort of there. But, but again, I'm trying to look past it too, because I care more about the gameplay than what this actually looks like. If it's art style exactly fits my personal needs. A few stretch goals. Again, I mean, I think it's priced fine. I don't see a problem with it. And there's plenty of information on it. So again, is it just too crowded of a market this week for Dynamine? For something to go up head to head against the other stuff that's launching and are people already saving for some of the bigger campaigns later this month? I don't know, but 10%, we'll see where it goes, Dynamine. Next up, Celsius the board game. Again, like 15% funded and they've got a 24 hour early bird discount. So obviously by the time you guys are watching this, it'll be well over. 45 euro, $50 for the price point, one to four players. And you're just modifying your spaceship, moving it around the system, planets, uh, different areas, trying to get stronger, trying to get better crew and help you just kind of be the first one to get the most victory points so that your spaceship is the best. Detailed minis. I mean, again, like if this is sort of like an engine builder, piece builder, like I don't really need the minis. I and mean, I guess that'd be the question is, is the price point raised because of that? Again, the price point isn't bad either way. 45, 51, only two pledge levels. Again, I guess that's one of those things. Maybe like with collab, people were like, I don't really need it or I don't want it. Again, the aesthetic isn't quite as appealing to me, just like with Dynamine as some of the other ones out there this week. But again, art, art is personal anyway. So I like the, the overview uh, animations here. Speed, fly around, upgrade, jobs, fighting. There's enough info on how to play, who's playing, everybody's playing. Again, two pledge levels, no big deal there. So again, like why aren't people interested in this one? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be one of those weeks. It's going to be one of those months. There's just so much competition. And like I said, this month is just packed of games that are, I don't want to say like outstanding, but all of these games look solid to me. Like, I don't think any of these look like necessarily bad games. I think a few look slightly better than others, but nothing that stands out to me is like, oh, red flags or, oh, this has clearly no interest whatsoever. So again, it'll be interesting to see what happens with these. Um, especially because, you know, some of these will inevitably probably have to relaunch because of the nature of them. So there you go. Next up, we have Patria Libre, the struggle for Mexican independence. Uh, 70% of the way funded. Uh, this is a relaunch, actually, I found out after I did the video last week. So let's take a look at this. Uh, free with 48-hour early bird here. So what is that? Napoleonic Confederation? Uh, what is that? Here we go down here. Expansion. So there you go. Um, Google Translate friendly. <laughs> uh, I like that. I've never seen that on a Kickstarter page before. Uh, recreating historical events in Mexico, New Spain, uh, back in the uh, 19th century. So originality, uh, a little bit of everything. What are you doing, though? Because, I mean, the gameplay on a war game like this is really what matters. You have tokens that have different actions on the faces, and the actions can alternate depending on what sides, I think they're saying. Yeah, yeah, and they go into a little bit more detail about it down here. Uh, this boss mechanic, bivalent order of sequential spin. That's actually a little bit of a tongue twister there. Again, what, the actions that it provides you, and then you pick them up, you flip them to their opposite side, and then it's going to change what you have available to you on the next turn. Again, this is like sort of way out of my comfort zone. I have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm looking at this. And so I would just say, if you have any interest in this, uh, don't listen to me blab about it, but go over and check out these different actions, these different mechanisms, and how it varies from other war-ish games out there, because I have no idea. They've got a rule book out here. They've got it on Tabletop Simulator. The price is what, like $39 or so? Yeah, $39 bucks, uh, gets you the core box plus STL files, and $73 is going to get you two of them. So, yeah. I would just say, if you have any interest, there's a ton of information on this page. Uh, check it out. 
bunch of videos, um, everything you kind of need to know. Again, totally outside of my comfort zone, but you know, it's doing well. So thought I'd mention it. Patria Libre. Check it out. Next up, uh, the new edition of Evolution, the New World. Again, already funded. $22,000. Interestingly, I'm just going to go off first gut reactions here. Solo mode in the all-in pledge, which means uh, you're not offering the solo mode if you don't go all-in. That seems weird to me. Let's see if that actually is the case down here. They've got the stretch goal progress bar here at the top, so that's a little bit uh, not updated since uh, it's 22000 now. Let's check out the, what these prices are, though. So if you're going to mention the all-in at the bottom, what does that all-in look like? So retail is 35 Master Edition Deluxe, I'm assuming. Uh, nope, gets you an expansion and exclusives. So it's going to cost you $15, it looks like, then, to get the expansion and the exclusives, whatever the unlocks of the stretch goals are. Uh, so, okay, that's the all-in. Okay, that's not... That's a little misleading then, if that's considered the all-in at the fifty dollars. So okay, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, it's just weird wording. I don't know why you'd word it like that because again, you could scare people off there if they're like, "Oh, well, I can only get the all-in. I'm not even going to bother to look at it." Um, you are looking at just sort of the Darwin evolutionary uh, pattern here, is what it looks like. Six epochs: evolve your animals, get food, don't go extinct, essentially. And they're trying to really incorporate the scientific element with, I believe, some facts and some, you know, interesting tidbits about what you've got going on here. Again, it's a 2010 upgrade, essentially. So, why back now? Solo mode, new cards, expansion. I mean, it's not a bad price. you got a couple quotes here. Wow, lots of quotes. Okay. Um, clearly, like I said, my first time looking at the page. They go over what's the $35 pledge here. And animal games lately are all the rage. So I'm not really surprised this is funded. Even for the fact that I didn't know this was a 2010 game before I did the video last week. Again, here you go. A little bit of the other extra that you're getting here with the evolution cards, the solo mode, and a little bit of extra tokens. So it is a little bit of a deluxified version. Eh, that's okay. Exclusive promo cards. Again, you know, it is what it is. I know people don't like seeing the exclusives, but it's the easiest way to entice people to back uh, games on crowdfunding right now. Just is. I haven't seen anything that's actually going to tell me the mechanics of how I'm playing it. So, okay, here we go. Halfway down the page. Play a card, get a new animal, or add one to an existing animal. Add a new area. Feed from an area. All hungry animals die. And evolution happens. Okay. I'd like a little bit more. So I decided to pull up the rule book here just for a brief second. And they give you a, you know, six round, essentially, synopsis. And each round has the four phases that you saw a little bit of there for a second. The first one is developing. It's either you're laying a card face down and creating a new animal. You're laying a card face up on a previous animal and giving it a new trait. Second round is you're putting out an area. An area that is going to be something that you can get uh, resources from that you can get food from and that then you will be taking actions at it appears where you're either searching for shelter in phase three feeding or attacking with a predator and then phase four is extinction if you don't have enough food requirements met on the animal then it goes extinct so and they run through all of these mechanisms of the different actions and then rinse and repeat here and do it six times and you're done so uh there you go uh it, it, relatively straightforward uh, they give the variants here as well, uh, a couple different ways to play, if you will, and we saw already uh, the solo mode over here. So, not a whole lot of mystery. I think you should be able to easily get enough information if you like this uh, in the first place. So, again, price seems fine. $50 gets you some expansion and exclusives. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely will be looking at it at the $50 pledge level um, and getting it now. So, there you go, Evolution New World. Now we have... I guess this is it. Two-player, shy button game, RPG game, in sort of the uh, fog of love side of things, in more of a zen experience. Uh, I know just from talking about it last week as well, these symbols on the sides of the cards are really what you're matching up and trying to utilize. Now, again, I don't know much else about it. Two people uh, connected, and you're choosing sort of how they're connected in terms of their relationship. 18-card uh, game, as you're all familiar with, if you're familiar with their products at all. Uh, setting up a 3x4 grid, as well as the goodbye pile. And then you're going through a scene based on what you decide on. And that's sort of the relationship there in the first place. So it's a little bit of role-playing-esque in terms of the card play as well. So 
Uh, there are the symbols themselves, and a little bit of a mini expansion, mini, oh, solo mini RPG that goes along with it. Uh, usual button shy price, button shy bundles are available, and all of the add ons that we've seen in other campaigns. So if this interests you, uh, I guess this is it. Check it out. Now we have Broken Planet. Again, 100% funded, almost 150% funded. This looks and reminds me very much of the other underrated indie game, Chaosmos, only this has more, I think, simultaneous play. Uh, deduction and strategy, though, similar to Chaosmos, and that's sort of what it makes me think of in terms of the mechanics. Uh, this is going to be some take that, though, and you need to be aware of this. Uh, you're doing a collect phase and an offer phase. You choose where you're going to go in terms of your next location, and you get unique enhancements, benefits, positives to help you in your quest. And if you pay attention to what your opponents are doing, you can start to guess out where they are. So what you're doing in this game is, like I said, the two different phases, the collect phase and then the offer phase. You're secretly choosing one of these numbers that you're going to go through. They're all going to have temples or relics. When you collect there, you get certain resources at that certain island. That is the gist of the first phase. The second phase is where you're going to be building these temples that are going to give anyone a benefit, but also have the ability to give you passive benefits or effects when applied to the map. When you build said temples, it also allows you to go further on your sort of own uh, tech tree, if you will, including crafting these relics, which give you points at the end of the game. The other aspect here is this is where the take that comes in. This is where the bluffing deduction comes in is you're allowed to basically put one of your resources or Ruby onto an Island that you think somebody's going to, if you successfully do that, then basically you have to discard a significant amount of the resources otherwise collected and gathered there. Game goes until it says here, the last offer spot happens. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins two player version. Although I think this would be probably better at the four player. And uh, some extra rules here if you want to add a little bit of uh, variance already from that get-go. Again, this looks like a solid game. Uh, but again, I think it depends on the group. Uh, with Chaosmos, uh, with the more socially interactive, deductive groups, this is going to be a big hit. If your group isn't like that and doesn't like the take that dynamic, again, this is probably an easy pass. Green version is just uh, easier to produce components. Uh, the deluxe version gets you the exclusive components, including the custom 3D stuff. And then just a two pack and a four pack. So not really a huge difference in what you're getting between the levels, just a slight different price point. So um, yeah, and price point seems about right. And again, it seems like one of those games, like as they say here, where there's going to be a meta. And if you like games that you play repeatedly and develop a meta from that, I think this game is going to be a big hit and could fly under a lot of people's radars. So there you go. Broken Planet. Check it out. There you go. That is the roundup for this week. Uh, a little bit of some highs, a little bit of some lows, a little bit of all over the place. Uh, maybe a little bit of a lull for some of us or for some of you, depending on how you feel about some of these with the other stuff uh, coming out later this month. Because um, there are some heavier hitters definitely coming out later this month. If I wouldn't have screwed up completely on the title blades, uh, you know, date, that's on the 22nd. Kingdom Forlorn is on the 15th. We have the unfair expansions in there. We have Rolling Heights from AEG. We have just a bunch of stuff just trickling out spread throughout the rest of the month and we're gonna gonna see where it goes so what am i doing this weekend um i am just getting kingdoms uh forlorn played that's that is my only goal of this weekend so i can get it played and get a video and uh go from there so if you're interested in that let me know uh as always tomorrow's upcoming crowdfunding games for next week uh will be out there as well and this weekend will be another exclusive uh patreon video so if you have any interest in that uh click down below on the patreon side of things and give me some support i'm gonna be redoing those levels soon so get in while you can no get in anytime it, it's not gonna change that drastically and um as always I'm, I'm gonna be trying to do like a discord but it's super like I'm, i may just focus on like patreon and maybe even like the youtube members or something i don't even know what youtube members is but i apparently i have access to it so uh, we'll see i guess i don't know and I'm looking into doing some uh, collaboration, hopefully. Uh, I've got uh, some conversation just with one person out there right now. Uh, that person knows who they are. And we're just going to kind of see uh, what spawns of that. So, uh, as always, I think at the beginning of next week, I have tons of videos actually ramped up and set for you guys. I did a filming machine over the last two weeks. And as well, I will also have my January roundup of where my collection is at, the new games that I played, as well 
as if you again to link to the patreon i'm gonna you know put out in the next week i probably this upcoming weekend uh letting them choose a game or two of the uh 10 by 10 that i'm gonna do so the 10 by 10 for the year because as i said in the other video uh my channel update uh you never see the content creators doing a 10 by 10 right it's i gotta play the new i gotta play the new i gotta play the new well let's play some of the old too speaking of that my best the other big video best of 2021 i did the 2021 releases i'm also going to have a best new to me in 2021 and plenty of non-2021 games in there that you should be interested in especially if you haven't seen them before so I'm I'm actually really happy with that video because I played a lot of good games that weren't from 2021. That list was actually harder to make than my top games of 2021 that were released in 2021. So there you go. That's all I got. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for dealing with me for another weekend or going into your weekend. Like I said, I'm just going to be playing uh, Kingdoms Forlorn, maybe a little bit of something else. I got a couple other prototypes that just arrived in the mail. So uh, probably a lot of rulebook reading and a lot of just uh, sort of scratching it out trying to figure out how things go together and because sometimes you read those rule books and it doesn't always click you got to actually get the pieces out i've found that's really helped me more so in terms of actually like okay oh okay oh that's how it kind of goes so that's probably what i'll be doing now if only i had like a designated space that i could just leave stuff up in that'd be so much easier um but like this doesn't really work in here too well and i can definitely can't leave it on the kitchen table for uh, furry and non-furry paw hand reasons. So, nah, whatever. Someday, maybe. That's all I got. Stay classy. Have a great weekend. Do something fun. I'll see you around.